in fulfillment of his promise to take care of workers' welfare, the governor of Ibu State, Prince Dapa Abiodun, has presented brand new cares to newly appointed permanent secretaries and the auditor general in the civil service to boost their morale and increase service delivery. The governor, while presenting the official cast to them at the government house, Isale Bin in Abirikuta said the gesture was to ease their mobility and enhance productivity. The governor, represented by the head of service, Mr. Kola Olifagum, said he would always look into the wellness and well-being of the workers and the citizenry at large by spreading dividends of democracy across the state. Governor Abedo asked the beneficiaries of the car gates to continue to put in their best and add value as well as improve their leadership qualities to help the service grow. We are not surprised because our governor is only thinking about how to make life easy, make life comfortable for all categories of people in the state. And uh, I want to call on my colleagues, permanent secretaries, and indeed the whole public service to come to support our governor, to continue to share his vision and mission, so that at the end of the day, the people will still continue to enjoy the duty of the place. Speaking on behalf of the beneficiaries, Permanent Secretary Hospitals Management Board, Dr. Mrs. Olayin Kailemdi, Ministry of Culture and Tourism, Mrs. Uluato Sioloko, and Bureau of State Pensions, Mr. Adeso Jadewi, appreciated the governor for the good gesture extended to them and promised to further put in their best to continue to keep the flag of the state flying. We want to thank the Excellency, Prince Dr. Mandiotu, and the head of COM for this um, benevolence, and we promise that we will further put in our best to do the needful and continue to keep the flag of the state flying. And we thank you very much for this opportunity. Meanwhile, the head of service, Mr. Kola Olifagun, received in audience the Association of Confidential Secretaries in the Civil Service, led by its president, Mrs. Itumu Lua Koliju, with a charge on them to create their CADA to ensure that their CADA comply with today's technology. And the timely intervention of the state government in ensuring that few marketers do not engage in shop practices in the wake of removal of fuel subsidy has been applauded by a cross section of Nigerians. Motorists, marketers, and people of Iwiku, Ituri, and Ilaru areas were receiving members of the task force on monitoring exercise of the sale of the products in filling stations in the area bared their minds on the efforts by the state government. Matthew Shomi completes the report. We will get report in the course of this bulletin. And the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, and the Trade Union Congress, TUC, have agreed to suspend the planned nationwide strike after a constituting committee to review seven points from work. This is coming after a long session between the federal government and the union leaders. The federal government, the TUC and the NLC, to establish a joint committee to review the proposal for any wage increase or award and establish a framework and timeline for implementation. The federal government, the TUC and the NLC, to review World Bank finance cash transfer scheme and propose inclusion of low-income earners in the program. We are doing it. We will go into more specifics to make sure this naughty issue is resolved. Thank you very much. All we want to encourage government is to take this seriously because this government is just coming in. Uh, this may be the first agreement that is being signed by by this government that, that was inaugurated on May 29th by the Timothy, uh, President Timothy's administration. So I, I want us to, to commit uh, to get these issues resolved as soon as possible. To be 2023 to agree on the implementation framework. And the 
Italian intervention of a Gustav government in ensuring that fuel marketers do not engage in sharp practices in the wake of the removal of the fuel subsidy has been applauded by a cross-section of Nigerians. Motorists, marketers and people of Iwiko, Itori and Ilaro areas were receiving members of the task force on monitoring exercise of the sale of the products in the filling stations in the area bear their minds on the efforts by the state government. Matthew Shomi now reports. On the move again to protect the people from the sharp practices of some unscrupulous elements who may want to capitalize on the imminent removal of fair subsidy by inflicting hardship through hike in the pump price of petrol, holding of the products and short changing by under dispensing that demolish it. Why we have delay of, of uh, stocking in the various uh, depot? Orlando, Total, Ikea, Nobi are among filling stations monitored in the local governments, while Conway, GDM, Unit, and Zola Cat were also monitored in Yewa South local governments. Matthew, show me OGTV News. Ogo State Ministry of Health through the College of Health Sciences has conducted a computer-based test for over 4,000 applicants into its colleges of nursing and midwifery across the state. The entrance examination which was held at the Ogo State College of Nursing located within the Federal Medical Center in Dabba premises had applicants from Ogo and other states in attendance. Elizabeth Esso reports. In the mass migration of health workers and various health professionals, the country and many of the states see the need for training personnel in various departments of the health sector. At the first day of the 2023-2024 academic session entrance examination by the Ogun State College of Nursing Services, over 4,000 applicants from within and outside the state were seen being accredited for the computer-based test at the School of Nursing, Federal Medical Center, Idiaba, Abrokuta. We have our past questions that can guide them, which they will download while they are doing the registration. When they download the question, they can go through it. It does not mean that what is there will come out. But we guide them in faces numbers of uh, numbers of uh, the numbers of uh, questions under each subject: physics, chemistry, biology, English, mathematics, and other like uh, current affairs. Each have a 50 subject. Monitoring the exercise was the permanent secretary. Ministry of Health, Ogun State, Dr. Kayode Ladendi, 
were confirmed that a pardon shift witnessed in the conduct of the entrance examination was towards transparency and admitting the best candidates. It was even during this administration and the last administration that we got the school accredited, all the five schools are accredited and their full accreditation. And we even went further. We now went collegiate. We now have school of uh, a college of nursing sciences. And also the NBT, National Board for Technical Education, just concluded a verification exercise in all our schools so that we can now start I mean, um, um, uh, uh, bringing in our students through a uh, jump, joint admission, matriculation, examination. He confirmed that the entrance examination, which is in three stages, will afford the ministry to admit 350 out of the over 4,000 jostling for placement into the five schools of nursing and midwifery across the state. Some of the applicants speak about their experience at the examination or and reason for the choice of nursing. Just a familiar question, yeah, from the points that we do in the so in the tutorial, uh, for these kids, the first one I was very happy to um, answer this question, I'm sure I'll go and I'll show you. Um, since then I was like very young, I was like really into nursing, like any time I see nurses, I was just like, I want to be like them, like when I grow up I want to be a nurse, so I just like it's the best like occupation that shoots me. It has always been my dream being a nurse though. But I prefer Ogun State because I've been here for like years. I came with my sister. So I prefer being here and I love the school. Successful applicants would be contacted immediately after the CBT examination for oral interview at designated venue through their porters. Elizabeth Esson, OGTV News. As part of events marking the 130th anniversary of the Founders' Day of St. Barnabas Anglican Church, Okwawa, a block of three classrooms converted into the school hall by the old pupils of St. Barnabas Anglican Primary School has been commissioned. The ceremony was held at the school premises Okwawa Udubu local government area of Ugu State. Bola Jisamsin completes the report. In an effort to support the government in providing conducive environment for teaching and learning process for both teachers and future leaders, the old pupils of St. Barnabas Anglican Primary School, Okwawa, donated a hall to the school. Representing the Governor, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Education, Science and Technology, Mrs. Abosade Obuleya said the gesture extended to the primary school by old pupils is one of a kind and history has been made as the Ogun State Government under the leadership of Prince Dakwabiodo is doing all it requires within the available resources to positively change the narrative in the education sector of the state. Our Governor presently, the Governor of the State, Prince Dakwo Abiodun CON is so much interested and we are ready in our ministry also to associate, you know, with whoever is ready to give us that support. It's a laudable program, it's a very kind guest so that they have extended to us in our ministry. So we newly built hall uh, should be used to the fulfillment of our uh, humanity and I pray that uh, our community as a whole and the global local government at large will witness more of this. The chairman of the occasion who doubled as a president, Old Poppins Association of St. Barnabas Anglican Primary School, Ashiwaju Shino Ogubambo, emphasized the need to give back to the school that gave them quality education and complement the effort of Ogun State Government in provision of infrastructures as believed that the government cannot do it all alone. In our community of Hawa, we have pointed out to His Excellency our urgent need for the construction of Hawa through Ikonga to Ijebu Ibe Road. This road, which in the past has enhanced commerce in our community and made transportation easier, cheaper, and faster to our neighboring communities, is in a terrible change. And we believe our governor will make 
in construction in priority. A student appreciated the project and promised to make judicious use of it. I thank Joe Sudan who do this all. I'm very grateful about this. I want Governor Dapadarin to do more to this school and to the community also. Quiz competition, a recitation and cultural display were the highlight of the occasion. Bolaji Samson, OGTV News. The Tertiary Education Trust Fund, TAT Fund, has approved 130 million naira for each polytechnic as zonal intervention in its 2023 intervention line. The Director of Infrastructure of the Fund, Buhari Mukail, who confirmed the development at the TAT Fund MBT sensitization workshop on the 2023 zonal intervention skills for rectors and directors of skills in Beneficiary Polytechnics in Abuja on Tuesday said the fund will be geared towards reinvigorating skills acquisition in polytechnics across the country. Mikhail said the intervention was to consolidate the efforts of the national body for technical education in increasing the capacity of polytechnics to deliver on their mandate. He said the intervention was mostly used to support institution to meet basic requirements for accreditation, adding that the intervention focused purely on projects with academic relevance, thereby addressing deficiencies in core areas of acquisition of essential instructional materials and equipment for teaching and learning, as well as building capacities for the procurement of such equipment. The director also revealed that since the inception of the Zonal Intervention in 2016, the fund had allocated over 52 billion naira as Zonal Intervention and List in Polytechnics. He said the intervention, a post-research activity, had created an opportunity for academic staff in the science and technology programs to fabricate equipment, thus promoting skills development in the Polytechnics. The Nigerians can hear the sigh of relief following the truce between the Nigerian government and the organized unions, trade unions, over the embargo on the removal of subsidy on petroleum products. While some Nigerians say the leadership of the labor should be commended for a prompt action on workers' rights, others expressed concern over the lukewarm attitude of the NRC and TUC in the last few days. Fura Adiso completes the report. We decided that if by Wednesday for meditation to continue, that we will prepare the services and commence open nationwide. Dead on arrival. It need to be a reasonable people, they just have to listen with Mr. President. And I think that's what really played and that's what, what really happened. A responsive government and a proactive labor, salvaging Nigerian economy from further nose diving and paralysis, no thanks to the removal of the petroleum subsidy, which has made the nation abysmally poor. My immediate reaction will be that um, it's a welcome development. In the sense that um, people in the private sector, um, like us, are already uh, projecting the kind of loss that will come in terms of revenue and um, disruption of uh, business that will come. And that's not only uh, limited to uh, the private sector, even the public sector will suffer. The subsidy removal is, is really causing a book than, than good. As at now, it is something good that they are trying to do, but at the time they are implementing it, it is just causing chaos for citizens because living daily is, is getting more difficult. We want to take transport now, they will be telling you something that we used to take from here to there that used to be 100 now, now they will be telling you 300, 200. So it is really, and everybody is getting aggressive about it. If you just meet somebody now, the person will just be shouting on you, what is the problem? You just say, are you not in the country? Nigerians are groaning in pains and the new government needs to set down and the labor seems to be waking up from its slumber.
deprived their buying before is too much. They should please, they should please, they should help us. We, we the citizens are begging them. They should find something to do to it. It is, we, they are not, there's no increased salary. So, and the expense at which we live by, it is not adding up to the salary we are making as citizens of the country. So, there's no increment of salaries, but there, there's increment of every other things we buy daily, like food, transport, clothes, everything is, is on the high side. The position of labor to jump at um, the decision of the president or the government, you know, to remove the oil subsidy uh, when they have not actually showed up in uh, the other period before now, uh, can be questionable. You know, when you look at it that there are other issues that have come, when there was Naira swap, um, and uh, people were having issues with them um, having to access their money and all sorts. I mean, things like that that affect the welfare of the members of the labor should also have been addressed. And uh, labor should have added voice, you know, to to that when that was lasting. Most respondents believe the initial call for mass action by the organized labor sounded like an invitation to anarchy. As many as the ladies wanted to talk to labor, yes, uh, we have to do this, what do we think we can do? They would have allowed him to achieve it. They would have allowed him to... Of ...representatives, as well as the federal government against terminating a contract signed with a private firm, Iris Smart Technologies Limited, for the production of electronic passport booklets. According to the House, procuring the equipment capable of putting the latest security features in the Nigerian e-passport will cost the government about 22 billion naira. The legislative chambers also warned that the production of 10 million booklets by the firm will be stored. These are parts of the recommendations contained in the report by the House Had Up Committee to investigate the proposed domestication and processing of Nigerian international passports, which the lawmakers considered and adopted at the plenary on Tuesday. In the report, the committee noted that the Smart Technologies Limited renewal agreement with the Federal Ministry of Interior on April 2015 clearly stated in Article 4.0 that the duration of the contract shall be for the delivery of an additional 10 million passport booklets. The committee added that the current management of the NIS initiated the domestication process which requires 90 to 180 days to fully implement the process and other processes of the passport which will solve the issue of scarcity. And Pauline Tarim, former Minister of Women Affairs and Social Development, has denied involvement in the alleged two billion naira fraud in her ministry. Talon, who said this in Abuja, noted that the investigation by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, was triggered by a false alarm, confirming that 500 million naira was actually released to the ministry by the Ministry of Finance. Talon said the money was disbursed as received with documentary evidence. She said that she later discovered, based on investigation, that she was targeted for smear campaign because of her support for the Adama governorship candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Mrs. Aisha Binani, during the 2023 primaries. The support, according to the former minister, did not go down well with some vested interests in the election. She said that it was not long after the election that the EFCC investigating her rather invited her to their office as well as her daughter for questioning. The Ugu Area 1 Command of the Nigerian Customs Service has intercepted 11 trailer loads of smuggled foreign parboiled rice of 50 kg each, equivalent to 6,924 bags. This is contained in the report of the command as delivered by the Customs Area Controller, Controller Bamidili Makindi, at the monthly briefing. Bumi Adigo was at the press briefing and he completes the story.
Now the customs are closing on smugglers, which should have been a good example for them to desist from this act. The more they continue in this illicit business. For the months of April and May 2023, the Ogumon Area Command of Nigeria Customs Service has recorded some arrests and impounded so many goods that were illegally taken into the country without approved papers. Our visual officers intercepted and made a seizure of three foreign goods, luxury glasses, which were made small willing to the country through the border on the 15th of May, 2023. Also, two brand new Toyota and his buses, 2022 model, with chassis number JTH and YCPOP6018610 and JTGH N9CP 7P6019835 were also intercepted and seized by eagle eyed officers in the bush park between Shawojo and Imashai communities on Monday 29th May 2023. As they make arrests, the service also generates revenue from those who are ready to do legal business and also facilitate trade. All that is just recorded are 6,934 bags of small foreign available of 50k GH, which is equivalent of 11 trailer loads, premium petroleum servants, used as cannabis sativa and other prohibited items. The total duty paid value of the seizure is 335 million. 855,989 Naira only. The seizures are made with the strategic development of intelligence across the state. Mami Adigun, OGTV News. Okwere Riyadeomi is ready for business news when we return. Please stay tuned. Thank you for joining us on the business segment of the news. Nigeria and other members of African Union are taking steps to enact legislation to attract additional revenue of $220 billion from taxes. Also, there are moves to boost generation by approximately $40 billion from cross borders transaction. Members of the union concluded a three-day meeting of the Specialized Technical Committee on Finance, Monetary Affairs, Economic Planning and Integration Subcommittee on tax and illicit financial flow in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Iran has esteemed tax in Africa contemporary issues affecting the continent. The members adopted recommendations that ensure African interests are protected in the design and implementation of the global tax rule and ways to improve domestic resource mobilization for Africa's development. The meeting conveyed by the African Union Commission Department of Economic Development, Tourism, Trade, Industry and Mining was supported by the African Tax Administration Forum. The federal government recorded 930.8 billion naira fiscal deficits in January and February 2023, according to the Central Bank of Nigeria. The CBN stated this in its monthly economic report for February 2023 that the estimated overall fiscal deficit of the federal government expanded in February due to a drop in the retained revenue. At 513 billion naira, the provision fiscal deficit of the FGN rose by 22.8%. Relative to the preceding month, however, it was 16.2% below the budget benchmark. According to the report, the fiscal deficit was 417 billion naira in January. The report said accre accreditation into the federal accounts decreased by 32.3% in February relative to the preceding month on account of the 60.2% fall in oil revenue. Nigerians total debt in seven years outweighed the revenue generated by the federal government by 13.26 trillion naira, according to findings. The findings were based on data from the Central Bank of Nigeria and Debt Management Office. The debt included borrowings by the federal government and states, including the federal capital territory, as well as borrowings from the CBN through ways and means advances. 
The DMO recently stressed the need for Nigeria to boost revenue and manage spending. Past reports have shown that Nigeria suffers declining revenue despite a widening budget deficit. The total budget deficit under the former president, Muhammadu Buhari, was set to hit 47.43 trillion naira, according to an analysis of the federal government's data from the Budget Office of the Federation. According to data, deficit financing has risen by 370.54% from 2.41 trillion naira in 2016 to 11.34 trillion naira in 2023. Financial analysts have raised concerns over Nigerian debt burden, saying it is likely to hit the 68.8 trillion naira mark by the end of 2023. This is coming after the National Assembly last month approved former President Muhammadu Buhari's request to securitize the federal government's 22.7 trillion naira ways and mean liabilities from the CBN. With the securitization of the liability, the CBN officially becomes a constitutionally recognized long-term creditor to the government. According to analysts by the same token, the liability has been formally added to existing debt stock expected to reach 68.8 trillion naira by the end of the year. The National Identity Management Commission said enrollment figures for national identity numbers have crossed the 100 million mark. According to figures obtained from the Commission as of May 27 this year, the figure stands at 100 million, 21,186 unique records, the highest cumulative enrollment figure in over 10.9 million was recorded in Lagos State. Regional figures indicated an almost equal distribution across the North and South. And that was the business news. We now go back to Wally for the rest of the bulletin. Stay with us.